As a woman in the United States, I know we're still battling issues like equality, choices with our body, discrimination, a whole slew of things. We know this, right? But when I think of and hear stories of other women around the world and what they're going through, I truly am grateful for my life. There's been some tough times to deal with, for certain, but nothing compares to the journey of our next guest and what she's had to go through. Born and raised in Iran, escaping imprisonment, or even worse, because her voice was too loud. I'm excited to share the story of our next guest, Ms. Nagar Cooper. I'm Mary Brucker, and this is Women and What We Do. So welcome, Nagar. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. I think our listeners are in for a whole new world, really, to uh, to listen to your story. Uh, our podcast is Women and What We Do, and I think that the heroic things that you and, and your mom mm-hmm. have gone through is uh, definitely worth sharing. So why don't you just start off by telling us a little bit um, where you're from and <laughs> how did you get here? Well, thank you, Mary, for having me. It's an honor to be here. It's uh, exciting to share my story. I am from Iran, born and raised. I lived there until I was 23. And I moved from Iran. I moved to Italy to study. And destiny brought me here. That's a long story. Well, we we might get into (laughs) it. (laughs) I don't remember it being that easy, right? (laughs) Well, definitely not. It's, you know, living in the U.S. has... um, brought it to my attention. I've seen it. I've seen how people don't realize how good they have it. I was born at a time that there was war between Iran and Iraq. And it was very difficult because basic needs that a mother could have for children, like having formula or diapers, it was so difficult to find. I remember we used to have coupons per family that we had to go stand in the line to get milk or bread or rice, which is one of the main dishes in the uh, Persian food. It was just difficult. And I was not raised wealthy at all, by all means. We were like medium to lower level. Uh, My parents worked really hard, both of them. As long as I remember, I don't really remember playing with my parents. I do remember playing with my dad when I was little before I go to bed because he would come home really late and he was tired and we were the joy for him. But my mom, she was always working, always working. And school system was really brainwashing. It was difficult. It was, they would, I see kids go to school here and they nag about things that I just grab my head. I'm like, do you have no idea? No idea how girls go to school because schools are girls, boys. And how... um, the dress code, you have to cover your head, you have to cover your arms, only your wrist can be shown from your wrist on. Your body should be completely covered from ankle down. Like it is, and the only thing that women have is their face to show. And because of that, like the, they're always very self conscious. They generally put so much makeup on because they try to express themselves with their eyes and their facial uh, expressions in general. It was difficult, it was suppressing. It was all in the hand of man. And what did your mom do? You said she was working all the time. What did she do? My mom studied in childhood um, development, and um, it was actually a Montessori system that she was trained during the time of Shah, before the revolution, before 1979. That was around the time that, when the revolution happened, it was the time that my father was arrested because he worked for the government. And if it wasn't for the bravery of my mother, he probably would have been executed like so many more. Um, But she was always a teacher and uh, she taught many things. And she was also a principal. She worked in kindergarten. She worked in um, middle school, high school. These are the times that I was born after I was born. But she she was a powerhouse. This woman is. She's a tiny little hazelnut, (laughs) less than five feet, but she has like a bit six feet in the ground that we don't see. Like uh, she has the power of making things happen. Yeah, you you said if it wasn't for my mom, my dad would have been executed. Can you explain that? 
Well, just a little bit, yeah, I can because I don't I don't necessarily want to get into that so mm-hmm. much. Sure. Because it's they both are alive. Yep. And you never know. Understand. Um I mean I don't understand, <clears throat> which is crazy, but I understand why you wouldn't talk about that. Eventually I might write a book for them. Right. Oh, <laughs> Good. About them, yes. So during the time of Shah my father worked for the government, and um, when the revolution happened, no matter what you did, they would come after you, blindfold you, take you away, question you, and what did you do? And thankfully, in the place that my father worked, he had tried to resign a couple of times for his personal reasons, and that worked in his benefit eventually. But my mom had to go through so much. She stood in front of men who were they did not even see women for like it, that exist she went straight to the house of the ayatollah with 500 other women wow and she helped release so many of their husbands with the letter that she wrote with the signature that she got taking it to the prison back and forth and finally being able to take my father out now, the story that you hear from those prisons during that time, because it was so unfortunate because they were not being, they were not going to court. It was not, the judge wasn't actually looking at things and making a decision based on those things. And you would hear the story there in their cells every night. They're coming over, calling a bunch of names. The names are called, they stand up, they go out, you hear gunshots, and they never come back. So while you're in there, you're just thinking to yourself, oh, when are they going to call my name? Right. And this is still happening. This is 45 years ago. It's still happening right now because of the revolution that has happened around Masa Amini in September of 2022. Wow. It's still happening. They're relentlessly killing people. I think we just don't have a perspective of, of what that looks like. So what made you, I mean, I I could probably guess what made you want to get out, but how did you uh, manage (laughs) to leave your country? um, I had a big mouth and I would (laughs) not go, I would not, it would not be easy for me to be quiet when um, something is, what, what is asked of me is not fair. And that happens all the time in Iran. (laughs) It's like l- legitimately the, what how ha- what happens. So I got arrested <laughs> a few times, and um, I got beat up a few times. And one of them was really brutal because my body was like basically blacked like everywhere because they uh, they hit me with this black. What do you call them? The black um, like the things that you hit people with. Like yeah, the, like the clubs, the PR twenty fours, or the yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't even know what they call, but. I got beat up with those badly and I was changing in my house in my uh, bedroom my mom walked in and she did because I wouldn't tell her she walked in and she was like what have you done I'm like I talked Hmm. and she just hold her head and she's like you can't stay here when we were little my mom was very adamant that we need to learn different languages So from the age of like seven, eight, she wanted us to learn different languages. And we started English, Spanish and French. Me and my sister was one year exactly older than me. And so my English was always pretty good. And my accent was a little more British. But when I came to the U.S., it changed. I always wanted to learn Italian. I learned that the embassy of Italy has this program that you can study their language uh, with Italian teachers. And they would give you a scholarship if you pass the exam. There were 700 people who applied, and they were only taking 70 people, and I was number 59. Wow. So I got, because we, we were not rich, so I just worked with money. So I, was do, I used to do nails in Iran. That's what I was doing. And I was working uh, with another company. It was an import-export company that, because of my English, I was working there with them. So I just saved up. I had $7,000 in 2007, and uh, I packed it. And I left, I went to a city that I had nobody, I knew nobody, and I was very excited for all the changes and the new things, a new beginning. And I cut my hair with the number four, like buzzed it down. Wow. Like, new beginning. Right. All the way around. And I don't want to go back to this um, 
bad memory, but I'm just curious when you said you couldn't keep your mouth shut and you were arrested, what were the things that you were talking about? So many times happened that we had um, protests going on in Iran that I would be a part of it for whatever reason, I would be a part of it. I would go out and protest and I would just like many cases ran away just like so many others. Uh, When they started attacking, I would just run for the life of me. By the time that they arrested me, the time I got arrested because I beat one of them, because he touched my sister, Mm -hmm. and I would not have it. He pushed my sister, and she fell, and I just lost it. So I attacked him, and I beat him nicely, (laughs) and he felt really good. Wow because they do that all the time. And they arrested me, they took me, and I had to sign stuff that you can find my name. (laughs) It's just, I am so sorry. I promise I won't do that again. Right. Um, But that was one of the times that I got arrested. Another time I was arrested because the sleeve of my shirt was until my elbow and my forearm was showing. So they took me to the police they um, put me in their records, took a picture of me holding my name. And it just like when, you know, what is it? The pictures that they take here when you're arrested. Right. Like a felony. Mugshot. or mm-hmm. my, yeah. So imagine I was arrested because my forearm was showing. Right. And how incredible for your mom to say you can't stay here. How hard is that for a mom to, I mean, almost want her daughter to go somewhere else. Mary, my mom told me, she said, when you were born, I knew that you were going to fly away. She told me later after that, uh, years later, actually she was here in the U.S., she told me, when you, when I saw you like that and when we talked about you going to Italy, I just saw your, myself in you. And I know that you have so much more potential. And as much as everybody in Iran and people outside of Iran want the government to change and people to be able to live better, live actually, because they are dying, they're not living there. It just doesn't happen because unfortunately the population of people who are brainwashed in Iran is just super high. Right. And for the government to change, you need strong, fearless people to get their voice out and stand up. And there have been, but they come out and they kill them. So they, it's it's difficult. And she knew that I had, she just said, you have too much potential and you should get out. And thanks to her, I moved. My sisters moved. All of them moved. My parents, they live with me. And um, my father just celebrated his 80th birthday And at his birthday, he wrote a note and he talked about how grateful he is to be able to see the world, see that there is beauty and kindness. I have lived around and I have not seen kinder people than Midwestern people. Right. You go out for a walk, you see them, they smile, they are happy. For whatever reason, they're happy. They project it and you feel good. It's such a, a, a great perspective, I think, that we all need a reminder of is, you know, when we're having a, a bad day or a frustrated time at work or <laughs> a, a wardrobe malfunction, that at least we're not getting um, arrested or beaten or kindness that, that we all need to share with each other. So I love that perspective that we do not get enough of. The other thing we don't get enough of is music, (laughs) which is I kind of want to redirect to another one of your loves. And I've heard you sing and you are incredible. Thank you. Let's talk about that. Where did that come from? When did that start? Um, My mom's family, they're all all artists. My aunt is my aunts. Both are singers. My cousin is a singer and she's in the U.S., we all sang or played an instrument. Another thing that she really wanted us to do was choose an instrument. You have to play one. So we all sang, but in Iran, women are not permitted to sing or release songs because their voice is too provocative. So many girls left Iran to be able to sing because that was their um, passion. I did not leave because I wanted to sing. I left because I wanted to live. And after I lost my daughter, Nava, uh, at a stillbirth um, 
she her heart stopped and I just found myself uh, my grief to go through singing to release my voice and uh, talk about that and the passion that I have for women because I am a woman from Iran and I see that this happens and everybody just expect them to get up and run and go and be it so through that I just try to sing my words and my daughter gave me the power to do that but I always sang but not really professionally now I have two albums out and it's in all platforms one talks about women power and about taking yourself seriously remembering who you are because you have the power and in the hardest time of your life no one can help you but yourself right and the other I love one of the lines about looking into the mirror that your savior mm-hmm. is is really there. Yes, look in the mirror, it's you. Look at yourself. You are your own savior. Yeah. So why is it so important to put all of that into your music? I don't know. I think I find it so important to be able to be the voice of a lot of people, a lot of women in Iran, and I know how many of them don't have the platform. So I am grateful to be here, actually talk on their behalf. It's important to talk about it, and it's important to put it, what better art to put the words into to have other people hear it. Now I have tried to translate it, and there are translations of the lyrics online as well, so you can see that many, many women resonated with things that I said through this art, and I'm, I'm grateful to be able to have a platform to talk about that. Yeah, we're grateful too. It's amazing. Your message truly rings through. So uh, we got you to Italy. Now, how did you end up here in Toledo, <laughs> Ohio? Oh, the short answer. <laughs> the short answer is my former husband, okay. who is one of my best friends now. Mm-hmm. I was studying and working. I was working at a antique Persian rock store in sales. And in Cortona, Italy, I don't know if you have seen a movie, I don't even remember the name, but there is this good movie that was recorded in Cortona. And a lot of Americans, a lot of tourists come to Cortona. And this uh, store of mine was right in the middle of the piazza. So here comes Josh with his family visiting Italy, taking pictures of the piazza, sees me in the lens of the camera, takes a picture, stands a little longer. I see him in the corner of my eyes, and I looked right into the lens of the camera and raised my eyebrow like, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> and he's from Toledo? He is from, he is born and raised in Toledo. Okay. Yes. And he just walked over, and he's very charming, and he's in sales, so he just like <laughs> starts talking. And uh, suddenly finds this like interest in Persian rocks he w- that he had no idea where Persia even was. <laughs> um, so, anyways, that's um, the rest is history. Like, right. We just sustained in touch, and then I came over for his graduation. He proposed, and I said yes. Wonderful. And now you have beautiful children. Yes. One is your daughter. Mm-hmm. Sarva Ruby is my daughter. She's uh, three, going on thirteen. Yeah. So if you. Um, <laughs> If you talk to your daughter and some of the things that you've learned from where you grew up and where you are now, like what are what are some of the messages or life lessons that you're teaching her that I think we all should probably learn? I am so proud of her. I am so happy for her to be born in the United States. I have to express my feeling about that. And I say that all the time because people don't understand how lucky they are. And the fact that I see myself in her, but I am extremely careful on how much I project and how how much I tell her. I try to make sure that she knows her value without projecting on my past. I want her to know how valuable she is when she starts nagging about things, both my kids, Sarva and Rasa, boy and girl, doesn't matter. I remind them that they need to use their strong voice because I don't hear that because they're too privileged to be to to nag about anything because they have everything right I always ask her I won't say who's my pretty girl I say who's my fierce girl who's my strong girl who are we she just holds her bicep and goes strong we are strong that matters to me I want my daughter to know that she is capable of expressing herself, no matter what it is. 
express, talk about your feelings, and be strong. That's my, that is my goal for both my kids. Oh, it's so beautiful. And I, I mean, I, I really think that that goes beyond just telling children that, right? Like we as women should be telling each other that all the time, not worried about how we look or, you know, all the feels, but we are strong and uh, we can survive. My gosh, the things that you've had to, to go through is absolutely incredible. So what's next for you? I never thought I would end up in the United States. I always thought that I would be in Italy or go back to Iran, but I don't want to be cliche, but I have gone through so many changes in the past two years. And I think the path for me is to be kind and just plug away life and enjoy it. I truly believe that life is so precious that It's not worth wasting it on any negative thought or anything that comes to you that gets your brain fly to things that doesn't need to go to. We all work really hard. This is a country that you work hard and you gain a lot. I put a little bit away, but I spend as much as I can to create amazing experiences for me and for my children. I don't have a specific path. My path is to continue in the road that I'm walking in. Be kind because I believe kindness wins no matter where you are, no matter who you are. See people and just be kind to them. And I teach that to my kids and I think this is this will automatically put you in the right path. That's so beautiful. We don't need to know where the path takes us. Right? Just believe in yourself, in the energy around you, and whatever you believe in. It's crazy. I mean, so many times we think our path is going one way, and it it changes anyhow. So stay in the moment and and appreciate it. And trust yourself. (laughs) Right. Because we're strong, Mm -hmm. and we're fearless. (laughs) And we can uh, truly accomplish anything. Well, um, in closing, I mean, women in the United States, you know, um, we're on a mission. We like this is women this is what we do like what would you say to a group of women that you were standing in front of that um, may need a message from you I would say to women in front of me trust in yourself really truly believe in yourself because we all somehow suffer from imposter syndrome even if we loudly say oh I am this I am that no no really truly understand who you are Believe who you are and believe that you can get where you want to get because you can. Because nothing is, literally nothing is impossible if you really truly believe in yourself and you step into it. Well, I can tell you, you are such an inspiration. Your story is absolutely amazing. And I'm so grateful to have you here and to share it with everybody. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. I know you're on social media. I listen to you all the time. If somebody else wants to hear you or see your story, where can they find you? Um, I am on social media. I am on Instagram and TikTok and um, all the other ones. My Instagram is pretty big and that's where I am generally uh, post mostly and that is Negar Rain with one R because my daughter's name, middle name was Rain. So it's Negar Rain and uh, my website is uh, negarrain.com. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Look into yourself. Your savior is you. Absolutely beautiful words to live by. And also, fight for what you believe in, but my goodness, do not take anything for granted and be grateful for all that you're given. I hope that anybody listen will take that message and be kind and live your journey. Thank you so much for sharing your story of survival and gratitude, Nagar. Your journey is beautiful. And thank you for my marketing guru, Miss Angel Dennis, our executive producer and post-production, Mr. Chris Pfeiffer, and to you, our listeners. If you like what you heard today, please tune in and hear more amazing stories of women around us. I'm Mary Brucker, and remember, speak up. We do.
WGTE. Voices around us. WGTE is supported in part by American Rescue Plan Act funds allocated by the City of Toledo and the Lucas County Commissioners and administered by the Arts Commission.